So I'm gonna try to, um, in a period of an hour, go over the main elements that we have to keep in mind when we are interpreting the neonatal EEG. I have nothing to disclose, and I hope that by the end of the presentation today, you will be able to cite the characteristics of the neonatal period that need to be considered for the EEG interpretation. Describe the EEG maturational changes of the human fetus uh, that occur between the preterm and the postterm period, and formulate the interpretation of the neonatal EEG based on the current American Clinical Neurophysiology Guidelines, which is the body that um, set the guidelines for anything that has to do with a neurophysiological recording. Um, so the latest guideline of the American Clinical Neurophysiology Society was published in 2012 by a group of multidisciplinary uh, epileptologists from different institutes, institutions in the United States. And the first thing that they make clear on the guideline is what are the babies uh, that need continuous EEG? And they make clear this they were patients who have severe asphyxia and were on cooling protocol. The babies who have any suspicion for neonatal seizures, either because of uh, rhythmic uh, movements of the body or unexplained adneas. Any uh, neonate who has uh, clinical symptoms and clinical signs of uh, encephalopathy, any baby that is critically ill on a ventilator or subject to neuromuscular blockade agents, such as the case of the babies who have complex congenital heart surgery, and also any neonate that for any reason have an EEG done and there are severe abnormalities that need further monitoring. Um, I hope that you understand that I am coming to you today from the field of epilepsy. So oftentimes we are training uh, adult physicians that will be working with adults but will be in the setting uh, of um, interpreting the neonatal EEG for their colleagues in pediatrics, uh, in the pediatric part of the hospital. So for them it's very important that I always clarify why they need to learn the EEG and the, the neonatal EEG helps a lot in the assessment of the maturity of the baby. It helps to identify, identify the neonatal seizures and those babies who are on a status epilepticus. It also helps to evaluate the degree of neonatal encephalopathy and look for the presence of no, focal brain abnormalities. Of course, it's very important that the EEG also helps to evaluate the response to treatment and provide a future neurodevelopmental prognosis. I also tell our, my fellows in the, uh, who are training in epilepsy that there are additional reasons for which we should be interested in the subject and we should keep in mind that some of the epilepsies begin very early in life and this is a case of the benign uh, neonatal epilepsies which are considered uh, have been considered idiopathic, but now we know that they have a clear genetic substrate. And also, many epilepsies who have a symptomatic base due to gross malformations of the brain will also present in the neonatal period. Following our, our interest on a neonatal and neonatology, we also can see that babies who early have, early in life have, any evidence of an epileptic encephalopathy will evolve and have epilepsies later in li life that are more common for the pediatric neurologists, such as the West syndrome and the lenos gastaut syndrome. This uh, is uh, how the incidence of chronic epilepsy has changed with the development of the uh, excellence of care in the neonatal intensive care units. And we can see if we look up to 1997, postnatal epilepsy was reported in 20 to 56% of the patients who had neonatal seizures. And if we look at this table, the data after 2000, uh, after uh, the year 2000, we can see that the numbers reported variate between seven 
and 40 percent. I always like to sh uh, comment on this paper here by the, a, an Italian group the, of, uh, led by Dr. Pisani and they look for epilepsy at 24 months of life in children who have neonatal seizure and they reported 18 percent but the same group when they follow in at 30 months uh, at 30 months of age that number has increased to 41 percent. What is the reality at the Cleveland Clinic? Well, years ago when I was training here, we were doing very little uh, neonatal EEGs, but as you can see, the number of the neonatal EEGs that we interpret per year have increased. This is data as of December 2016, and the number of neonatal, neonatal EEGs that actually show abnormalities have risen up to 88 uh, patients per year. And if we want to look at the situation of the neonatal seizures, this is also in red represented here, how many patients with neonatal seizure we are seeing. So we definitely have to be, uh, have to have an interest on this topic. In the last two years, 15 and 16, we have 13 new neonates with neonatal seizure here at the Cleveland Clinic. The one thing that I also want to remind you is what is happening in the neonatal brain at the time that we traditionally record the EEGs. And we can record EEGs as early as 24 weeks, but most of the data that we have belong to babies that are 27 weeks and over, and this red bar represents the 27 weeks. By this time, we can see, if we look at the embryogenesis of the brain, that we have a six-layer cortex, but the folding of the brain that will lead to the jar eyes and soul size is just beginning to happen. These are uh, um, anatomical pathological pictures of the brain as these fissures develop. And you can see that in the third trimester, we can identify all the major uh, soul size of the brain. I hope that this serves as a good introduction and uh, then we should move into what uh, the re neonatal EEG recording entitles. I wish that I could tell you everything, but that certainly will take Many, many lectures. Hello. Hi, this is Marika. So this cartoon that you see here is uh, a cartoon that simplifies how we place the uh, electrodes for EEG recording in any human. As you can imagine, everybody has a different head size. The neonates have a very small head size, and we as an adult have a full developed head size. But we have to make sure that when we refer to each electrode, they are relatively placed exactly in the same place, independently of how big the head is. So many, many years ago, the group of uh, EEG techs and electroencephalographers uh, the bias system, and that is a system that is used today, and is a 1020 system. And what 1020 si is means is very simple. It means that in everybody, we are going to have a measurement from the nation to the union, and we are going to place the first electrode 10% of that distance up, and the rest of the electrodes 20% of the distance back. The same thing happened for a measurement that we are going to do from the each trago in the ears, and we are going to place the electrodes 10% up and then 20%. If those measurements are accurate, the middle of the head should cross in a line, and that will provide the electrode located in the vertex right where the baby's fontanelle is. Of course, the head of the baby is a very small head, so we don't have the luxury of putting all the electrodes that we typically, lo typically locate in a full developed uh, human head. Uh, so for that reason, we have created a simplified system for the neonatal EEG placement. And you can see that the electrodes that are located here in orange and yellow are the electrodes that we typically place when we are recording the EEG of the neonate. You're also going to notice that there are a lot of the electrodes placed in the central part of the head or middle of the head. C is a letter for central sulcus and T is a letter for a temporal lobe. And the reason is that centrotemporal regions are very rich and very active in the neonatal EEG. So we certainly want to record the activity coming from the, the, that area, and around 70% of the seizures will be originating from those regions. 
So the neonatal EEG also has some particularities when we compare it to the full grown up EEG. They are going to have an EMG. This is not a recording that we traditionally do uh, in babies after they are um, two months old or in uh, full adults. We are going to have an EKG, and that electrode is common for any electroencephalographic recording, regardless of the age. We are going to have extraocular electrodes that are going to tell us if the baby is awake, is on active sleep, or is on quiet sleep, or other modalities of the sleep. We typically don't put these electrodes in the full grown-up electroencephalogram. And of course, we have the EEG electrodes. And you can see that we don't record a lot of EEGs in very primitive babies because they are very small, but typically they require a lot of devices around their brain. So that's why we traditionally don't see a lot of uh, EEGs being done on these babies, but it's possible and it's doable. So the first thing that we need to take into account is how old is the baby by conceptual age. And I am not going to stop here because I think that you are the experts uh, on how we define uh, the conceptual age into preterm, near term, and term babies. We need to know what are the behavioral states. And the mere um, feature of seeing that the eyes are open is not always enough to tell us how, what the baby is doing. You know, newborn babies often have some swelling around the eyes, so you actually don't see that the eyes are open or not, or the, whether the eyes are moving or not. So that's why we need those extraocular electrodes to, play, um, to determine uh, is, if there is any eye movement. When the baby is in active sleep, in active sleep the respiration becomes irregular, the ENG can be, be low, the electromyogram can be low, but also can have a high voltage. And during, when they are in quiet sleep, the respirations are very regular and the EMG is flat. We'll see some examples in this baby. This is a baby that is four day old. At the time that we record this EEG, baby girl, she has been in the cooling protocol. By now, she's done with the um, cooling protocol. She's 40 weeks, five days. She ha was born with severe respiratory depression at birth, uh, at birth, and she had the cooling protocol. And this is a baby that demonstrates how the baby moves when the baby is fully awake. You can see that you, we cannot say that the, eye, uh, the eyes are open, but it's a baby who has a strong cry and have asymmetric movements of the limbs. We also can see that the baby's, the, the feet are quite cyanotic. But of course, this is not something that we will be able to give you an explanation. But what I want to show you with this uh, video is what will be happening on the EEG of that baby in this stage. So welcome to see the EEG recording. This is what uh, we use to provide information. And there are electrodes that are located on the left side of the head and those electrodes always are going to have an odd number. And they are electrodes that are located on the right side of the head, and those electrodes are always going to have an even number as the number that follows them. There are some electrodes, there are some exceptions, and we can see here we have a Z, and these are the electrodes who are located in the middle of the head. The head. And that Z, that Z stands for zero, following the nomenclature of the numbers. We can see here that we have a respiratory bell, and we can see here that we have a, an electro-oculogram uh, electrode representing the eye movement, and the electrocardiogram electrode is on red at the bottom. The other thing that we can see in this EEG is that the, as the baby is awake and moves, there is a lot of artifact that is being recorded, and this is represented by these bar dark lines, and this is certainly something that interferes with the brainwave recorder. That's why when we record the brainwave from the brain, there is a process of filtering what is noise and what doesn't belong to brainwave activities. And those activities are typically electromyogram or movement from the muscles, electrooculogram of movement from the eyes, and the electrocardiogram. As you can see, that activity has been by now mostly filtered. This is a baby who is on a sleep stage. I am not sure if you can see, but if you look at the eyelid fold, that eyelid fold is moving. 
And the reason that that eyelid fold is moving is this because this baby is on active sleep. There are no active movement on the lips. There are some movements of the chin, which are characteristic for the state. What is happening on the EEG? All the electromyogram due to the general body movements is gone. And we can see that there is some electromyogram here represented by these vertical lines. And this is due to the movement of the shin. We also can see if we look at the electrooculogram uh, uh, electrodes that there are some movement representing the eye movements of the baby that are happening. Okay? And we can see in the respiratory belt that the um, respirations are somewhat irregular. We can see that this EEG is a continuous EEG, and these are the grapho elements that we typically see in this age group full term baby. These are encoaching frontalis, and these are uh, temporal um, chart transients. When we go to interpret the EEG, the EEG is very susceptible to, no to noise, so we should be mindful that if they are in the uh, neonatal ICU environment, the ventilator, the incubator, the lines and drips are going to be a source of artifact that is going to interfere with the interpretation of the EEG. And that is why there is some training that is, is required for this. Feeding also creates artifact. We all see that the parents get the baby, or the nurse get the baby, and pat the baby. And that produces an artifact that looks like a seizure. Also, loud noises, flashes, lights, and any uh, nursing or parental care is going to create changes on the EEG that we should understand when we interpret the EEG. The other thing that is very important is that medication, cooling, antiepileptic drugs, morphine, as well fla as the parental care, nursing care, or the flashing lights, they are going to produce an attenuation on the activity of the background of the EEG. But in the next slides, we are going to describe what is this background of the EEG. So let's go to the basic organization of the neonatal EEG, and I provide you with some uh, uh, tables. I will ask you to uh, use the second table, the one that uh, doesn't have a graph. Okay. Yeah. And you're going to see that in the left hand side, it's going to be described all these elements, which are, by the American Clinical Neurophysiology Society, the elements that we should report in the neonatal EEGs, because these are the elements that will change when the neonatal EEG grows from a normal neonatal EEG to a different degree of encephalopathy to electrocerebral silence. And hopefully, in the rest of the conference, uh, in the time that is left from the conference today, I can give you a grasp of what these things mean. So let's start with the concept continuity and discontinuity. So um, this first uh, cartoon here refers to continuity. And what continuity means for the electroencephalographer is that one waveform is going to be followed by another waveform without interruption or fluctuation of the amplitude of that waveform. The amplitude is referred from the bottom of the waveform to the top of the, wave, the waveform, measured in microvolts. Okay? So this is what continuity means, one waveform after another waveform. This continuity means that there are going to be periods alternating in which there is a lower amplitude activity that is going to alternate with the highest voltage activity. And this is going to happen on and off during the duration of the EEG. So when we are talking about the periods of low amplitude, we refer them as the interburst. And we, when we talk about the periods of high amplitude, we refer them as bursts. This is an example of an EEG. So keeping those concepts in mind, would you say that this is a continuous or a discontinuous EEG? So if we look at here, 
Of course, this is unfair that I'm asking you this question. No? But it's out of habit. One way form follow the other ones and all the way along, that is true along the whole EEG, the whole page of the EEG. So this is what a continuous EEG looks like. One waveform after the other waveform. <laughs> I have to, uh, I will have to come back because there are so many concepts that I it should be learned to understand that one waveform follows the other one. But it, along with these waveforms, which are, have a range from delta activity to alpha activity, and the delta and the alpha activity and the beta activity are concepts that refer to how many times a waveform repeats within one second mark. So here we see that if there are solid red lines, and between this solid red line to this other solid red line, there is a second time duration. So we can see, for example, this waveform, which is the delta waveform, is a single waveform or a 1.2 waveform that repeats within a second. If we will have 14 of this waveform within a second, then we are talking that this is alpha activity, okay? But I, I think we can go uh, more into this activity another day. Here in this page, we see that this activity seems to be a higher voltage, and we can see it here on the left side, here on the right side, right? These are normal grapho elements for H that are called encoche frontalis or frontal sharp wave. And here we have this delta activity, it's a big wave, that lasts almost a second in duration is what is described in the books of the, as the anterior frontal dysrhythmia or frontal delta wave. They are typically seen in the frontal electrodes in the full term newborn baby. So this is a continuous EEG. Now this one is a discontinuous EEG. And you can see here we have a succession of lower voltage waves and then a burst of a higher amplitude or voltage wave. Then again, there is a low amplitude activity, and then there is a higher amplitude activity. So this is the discontinuous AEG. This is what we have been looking for, and this space in which the, the activity seems lower is what we will call the interburst. And this segment in which the activity is higher is what we will call the burst. This is a normal example of a discontinuous EEG, but this is classified by the American Clinical Neurophysiology Society as a normal discontinuity. This is the tracé alternance. And we can see that they are high voltage waveforms, and then they are a smaller waveforms that, as you see here, they are at a different frequency. There are multiple waveforms within a second, and this is alpha frequency. So as I said, this is an example of normal discontinuities. Now, this is an example of abnormal discontinuity of birth suppression. And the difference between the two examples is in the interburst interval, in the birth suppression pattern, the activity is zero. There is no voltage, whereas in the interverse interval of the tracé alternance, there is a voltage, there is an activity happening, coming from different areas of the brain. And in the birth suppression pattern, during the birth, we cannot identify any normal activity for a neonatal brain. These are just irregular spikes and polyspikes that are mixed in a random uh, and disorganized pattern. So we, when we look at how the baby develops encephalopathy, or how the medication changes the way that the EEG looks, what we notice is one important element that change is the interburst interval, which is <coughs> the time duration between the birth, one birth and another birth. In this normal baby, we have one, two, three, four, five seconds between one birth and another one. This is normal. 
that have been studied over the years, they have been multiple contributors, and we see that babies that are under 30 weeks typically have a longer interburst interval, but the amplitude on that interburst interval, as I said, is not zero. We record an activity that is as high as 25 microvolts. Between, as the baby gets older, the interburst interval gets shorter, and these are average in seconds. And of course, the other thing that happens is that the amplitude of that activity in the interburst interval becomes higher. And that's how we go from a discontinuous EEG to a continuous EEG. When we, the brain is able to create waveforms that have a similar amplitude. This is another example of a discontinuous EEG, but this is no birth suppression. So what we can see is that we have 12 seconds, again, the red line, from red line to red line, there is a second of time, and then we see a birth. But in the birth time, we see an activity that is a very poorly defined, is a low voltage activity. So this is what is called today a normal excessive discontinuity and refer to, pa to babies who are in some degree of encephalopathy. This is a moderate to severe case. This is a picture from a term baby. Again, this is an example from the same baby of before of birth suppression, and the, just to illustrate that the interbirth can have a different duration in a situation so pathological, such as the birth suppression situation. So this is the exception of the rule, so you can have a birth suppression defined as an interburst, a interval of any duration, but the amplitude of that interburst interval here is near zero. And as you can see, because I have been telling you that they are going to be artifacts from the environment, there is this line here that looks very wavy and almost very regular. This is 60 hertz cycle that the EEG is recording and not being able to, to filter probably from the incubator or any of the devices that are plugged into the electricity. As part of what the electroencephalographer has to learn is how to block those activities from the EEG recording. Although sometimes, as we can see in this case, that is not possible. So the second element that you see in that table on the left side is symmetry. And symmetry basically said that the same activity in amplitude and frequency that you're going to be recording in the left side of the head should be recorded on the right side of the head. So the newborn EEG is symmetric. Same activity on the left as same activity on the right meaning you are recording delta wave, alpha wave, theta waves in one side, the same area of the brain should have the same activity in the opposite side. But there is have to be a line for us to decide this is not a normal symmetry. And this is when there is a 50% difference between the amplitude of the activity in one side or the amplitude in the activity in another one. Let's take a look at example because this is better to look at example. So, the, neo, the neonatal EEG oftentimes have asymmetric findings. And one is only the amplitude, not the frequency. So we see that a delta wave on the right is 50% from the delta wave on the left. That is typically due to problems that are happening outside the scalp of the baby, like the scal edema, the cephalonatoma, so dural collections, etc. Now, but when that activity has a different amplitude, but also have a different frequency. In the left side, there is uh, delta activity, and in the right side, there is alpha activity. So if there is a mismatch. That typically indicates that that brain has a lesion, and that lesion can be a stroke, or it could be a congenital structural lesion. Let's take a look at the example. So this is a baby who has, obviously by the CT, extracranial edema, right? So this is, this will produce an asymmetry in the amplitude of the recording. Although, unfortunately, I don't have a better example, but these homologous regions, the parietal region, which will both have a lower amplitude because both areas are affected. But let's take a look at this example of this other EEG. We can see this is a discontinuous EEG, higher voltage activity, and then four seconds of a lower voltage activity. But when we get here, 
When we compare on the left side, remember odd numbers are left side, almost looks like there is a flat line, right? But if when we look at the homologous areas on the right side, the activity continues in the burst. So this is an example in which there is a change in frequency and amplitude between the two sides, and this baby will have a brain abnormality. And this is the MRI diffusion of this baby who have a perinatal stroke. Okay. This is a main difference when I teach or a, a, a adult electroencephalographer, because if that stroke would be happening to me, this will be a constant in the EEG. I don't know what is producing that. This will be a constant in the EEG from the beginning to the end. But for in neonates, for some reason, we see this asymmetry as intermittent periods in the background of the rest of the activity that is happening on the EEG. So this is the major difference between the neonatal EEG and the adult EEG. So I keep talking about symmetry and I keep talking about amplitude and voltage. Amplitude and voltage are the same concept and it basically refers to the how high that peak, that activity can be from the bottom of the waveform to the, to the top of the waveform. Okay. Typically, the new, um, let's, go, let's go how we apply the, uh, see how we apply the concept of amplitude in the neonatal EEG. First, let's take a look at tracé discontinu, okay? And the tracé discontinu is one of the normal discontinuous patterns that we see in the, in the babies. And we can see that when we look at that period of relatively lower amplitude in the EEG, they are typically gonna be under 25 microvolts, rarely zero but under 25 microvolts. And that means that from the bottom of that waveform to the top of that waveform, there's gonna be up to 25 microvolts measured in amplitude. When we look to, to tracé alternance, which is the next normal discontinuous pattern that we're gonna see in the babies during um, active and quiet sleep, we're gonna see that that activity is around 25 microvolts or up to 50 microvolts in a more mature baby. Now, we have here an example of the birth suppression pattern in which that activity, that amplitude from the bottom of the waveform to the top of the waveform will not exceed five uh, microvolts. And this is when we see an interverse interval during a birth suppression pattern, okay? Now, if you're talking about the electrocerebral activity, and now I want you to shift to the left side uh, graph, the electrocerebral activity will have an activity that will not pass the two microvolts. So this is a background suppression that we see or electrocerebral activity in the baby who have brain death by definition. Then we're gonna see different gradations of low interversal interval that are gonna be normal for certain age or are normal for the more term a baby. We can see here this borderline low voltage can be seen in a term baby, but it's a baby that is having the effect of medication. And the full mature term baby should have an amplitude in the interverse interval that will go between 25 to 50, bottom of the um, waveform to the top of the waveform. Okay. Let's look at some examples. This is again a discontinuous AEG. And we can see from here to here, there is a relatively decrement of the amplitude of the activity. And you can see that this activity, I haven't told you that in our EEGs, we have different ways to represent that activity. And here, the blue line next, next to each, each line represents 50 microvolts of amplitude, okay? This is an activity that we know that it's 50 microvolts because when we record this brain wave, we typically cannot see it. We are talking about microvolts. They go through a device that is called the differential amplifier. And that device that you see, the little box next to the bed of the baby that has plugged all the electrodes in, that, that device amplifies, make the activity bigger so we can see it with the naked eye. 
So this is an example uh, of the um, low voltage discontinuous EEG and this is actually the EEG that I had at the in in initiation of the cooling recording of the baby that I show you in the, in the videos initially. Okay. This is another example of a very suppressed EEG in a baby who is having encephalopathy and you can see that you barely can see or distinguish any waveform except these few grapho elements. Okay? So when we look at the activity, this line here is 25 microvolts. We almost don't see any waveform that will meet that amplitude. They are smaller than that. These are, these are the bigger ones. This is probably half of that 10 microvolts, this activity, but the rest of the activity barely we can see it. So this is a low voltage discontinuous EEG. Any questions up to here? No? So next term is synchrony. And this, so far I have been talking about linear concepts, right? The interverse interval in the preterm baby is longer, and as the baby arrives to maturity, it gets shorter until it disappears, okay? The amplitude of the burst is high, and as the baby gets older, it starts decreasing, decreasing, decreasing until it reaches the normal background expected. The symmetry of the head is referred to activity being the same activity in both sides of the brain. But the concept of synchrony is not a linear concept. In the preterm baby, okay, and the um, synchrony refers to the burst, to the part of the high amplitude activity. That activity in the preterm baby under 29 weeks is going to be 100% synchronous. So whenever the right side of the brain produces activity, the left side of the brain is going to produce the same activity. But between 31 and 37 weeks, the EEG gets a little bit more disorganized, and there is not going to be a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two areas of the brain. So the left side is going to produce activity, and few seconds later, the right side is going to produce similar activity. But when they reach I cannot go back. Oh, maybe here. Okay, here. So uh, these channels we have. So I have to tell you that I already told you that we have electrooculograms and EKG, but I have been showing you pictures where these channels are in, in different areas of the brain. That's inst institution related. Some institution like to put it on the top, the eyes. We put them in the bottom. The EKG here is uh, the third channel, and you have it here again in the bottom, okay? This is from a different, I just realized that whenever I touch the mouse, the mouse, that noise happened. And we see the channels here. I can tell you, and I'm not sure that I told you that there are letters too. The letters are simple. Each letter refers to the lobe of the brain in which on top that it is placed. So F is for frontal lobe, okay? P is for parietal lobe, O is for occipital. There are some exceptions of the rule. And you see that here it says FP. So FP refers to the first electrode that we place in the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe have a, occupies a lot of the extracranial part of the brain. So there are multiple electrodes placed on the frontal lobe and we need to distinguish them. So the more anterior, the one that you see right above the eyebrows of the baby, those are called FP for frontopolar, because that's the frontopolar region of the uh, brain. The rest of the electrodes of the frontal lobe are just called F. C is the other extension of the rule, because C, there is no lobe in the brain called C, but it's a central sulcus. And this is a, the electrode who is at the junction between the frontal and the parietal lobe. That is called C. So this is the other extension of the rule. So we see here, we have electrodes on the left side of the head, okay, frontal, central, and occipital areas. And then we have electrodes on the right side of the brain, frontal, central, central and occipital areas. Then we have here electrodes or again on the left side of the brain, frontal temporal, temporal occipital. So if you follow me, some electrodes are located like this, and some electrodes are located like this. And then we always like, we have the same scene on the right side, frontal, 
temporal, temporal, occipital. And there are these last, last four channels. Instead of arraying the electrodes, organizing the electrodes from the anterior part of the head to the back part of the head, these are organized from the left side of the head to the right side of the head. So we see here temporal, central, central, midline, midline, right central, right central, right temporal. Does it make sense? Remember the first cartoon that I gave you. Okay. So back to synchrony. Okay, this is an example of asynchronous AEG. And there is a normal asynchrony that you see between the 31 and 37 weeks. But if you see asynchrony after that, it's an abnormality. We can see that the left side here of the brain is producing an activity, and we don't see that activity on, in the right side until one, two seconds later. Okay? Now, the, a, a brain wave of the baby between 31 and 77 weeks is not 100% asynchronous. Most of the time it's synchronous. And we can see here that there are two births that are happening at the same time between both sides. Okay? Again, the other thing that I have to tell you about the montage is the simplified montage is the preferred montage. But in some institutions, they put a full montage. What you are seeing here, and that's why you're seeing more lines, is the full adult electroencephalogram montage. Okay? It's not my preference because a concept that I haven't told you, and I told you I cannot teach everything today, unfortunately. And the concept that the, what produces each line on the EEG is that activity that is recorded from that single electrode comes along to that machine, the differential amplifier, and it takes the activity that, that is recorded from the second electrode, first electrode, second electrode, and subtract it. So this is what we are seeing is a process of subtraction. First electrode minus se second electrode, and that will produce this line here. But you can imagine if you put electrodes that are too close together, the chances that activity be near zero is higher. So my preference in neonatal EEG, since the head is so small, is not to put a full traditional montage, because then you are producing an EEG that looks low amplitude just because you are subtracting the activities. Right? OK, so. Uh, the next concept that you see there is reactivity and variability, and reactivity refers to how the baby responds to external stimulation, right? Noises made by the parents, noises made by the nurse, and also variability is a very close term, but it refers to the internal arousal, okay? The baby slept and then is done sleeping, so now it changed to a stage of awake. So these are what these concepts need to be um, um, kept into account in the, the interpretation of the EEG. And these are concepts that are very closely related to the behavioral states. Awake, asleep, and is this asleep? Is this in transitional sleep, active sleep, or quiet sleep? And the EEG is going to respond producing some changes on the physical movement of the baby and therefore producing artifacts or the frequencies of the EEG. But we're going to see how we tied all this information together in the uh, in a few slides after this. So accent of reactivity on the EEG is normal for a very preterm baby. So very preterm baby, you actually have to look at them, what they are doing, to determine if they are awake or asleep, because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep, because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep, because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep, because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep, because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep, because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep, because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep, because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep, because the EEG looks the same no matter what. 
and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same 
no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. 
and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what and this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same 
no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what. And this is what to determine if they are awake or asleep because the EEG looks the same no matter what.